God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Be seated. Good morning, 149th Convention of the Diocese of Fond du Lac. It is wonderful to see you all here. Uh, just a, a, a side note, take your bulletin home with you and meditate on the gospel reading printed in your bulletin so you're ready for tomorrow when you go back to church. That's tomorrow's gospel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, God says to Israel through Isaiah. And Jesus as he appears to his disciples after the resurrection, says to them, Peace be with you. Fear not. Peace be with you. These are the most common first words spoken by God or God's messengers. If you think about it, it makes sense. Aside from the fact that the near presence of divinity might be more than a little unnerving, Humans are often fearful, anxious beings. Even when we mask our fear and anxiety with posturing and bravado, or try to deny it even to ourselves. But the truth is, we are, as Evelyn Underhill wrote, fragile, fugitive things, faulty, clumsy vessels. Humans are vulnerable to hurt and loss. We bruise, we break, we bleed, and sooner or later, we die. It is no small thing to believe that the mystery at the heart of it all has taken on this fragile, fugitive flesh with all its bruising, breaking, bleeding, and ultimately death. I said in a sermon recently that the only way I can find myself able to believe in God is if the truth is that God is revealed on the cross. I can believe in a God who took on the reality of human sin and suffering and living in vulnerable love endured the worst humans can do, taking it to the cross and overcoming it through the resurrection. All other God talk sounds too sentimental and inadequate to me for the hard, awful, tragic realities of this world. And if the words spoken from the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. If those words ring from the heart of all eternity, then there is good news for us all. If such a God shows up and says, fear not, or appearing in the flesh says, peace be with you, I can take those words to heart and try to live them. And these are the words I want us to embrace as a church. These are not necessar necessarily easy words to live. We live in challenging times, challenging times for the world generally, challenging times for the church, declining membership, tightened budgets, wars and rumors of wars, and well, you know, if you just pay attention to just a little bit of the news, it's easy to be fearful. It's easy to lack peace In the church, we have been in a long season of declining membership and attendance. Across the church, across most churches, but particularly here in the Diocese of Fond du Lac, our average Sunday attendance in this diocese has continued to decrease. And over the last 10 years, we've decreased 43% in our average Sunday attendance which is actually right about average 
for the Episcopal Church in the Midwest. In 2021 to 22, the last numbers, the figures that we have, we did see a post-COVID uptick in this diocese of 24%, which, just let it be known, is a higher percentage of increase than any neighboring diocese or any diocese in a neighboring state. So that's a bit encouraging. But friends, we still have challenges, and there is also still encouraging things to point out. There are encouraging signs in the Diocese of Fond du Lac. Time will tell if the bounce back in attendance was just a rebound from COVID or something more. And I have reason to think that it is something more. This diocese is in a good place in many ways. Our budget is lean and tight, but just about everywhere I go in the diocese, I can feel a change. There is a good spirit. There is good energy in the diocese. Attendance is indeed up in many of our congregations, and that includes new members, not just returning old members. There were several congregations in the past year that recorded adult baptisms, which is a sign of real health. I can feel this new energy and spirit in our congregations. We have recently installed three new rectors who we will recognize a bit later at St. Luke's Sister Bay, St. Matthias, Manaqua, and St. John the Baptist in Wausau. Attendance and participation is up in all three of those congregations. That's not, of course, and this is to you clergy, not just about the rectors. These rectors have come to their churches, their congregations, the congregations that have called them at a time when they are ready for change and growth. Last week, just another sign of good things. At the annual Walsingham pilgrimage at Gracia Borgen, we had the best attendance we've had in years, COVID or no COVID. And it's not just attendance. There is more engagement in Bible study and other book studies, things like centering prayer. And we are finding new creative ways of serving our communities. Here are just a few examples, and if your church doesn't get mentioned here, just know that it's not because there aren't good things happening at your church, but these are the ones that I'm just going to mention just to give you an idea of some of the kinds of things going on. There is a laundry love ministry in Stevens Point that started was started by a member of the beloved community, which includes Intercession Episcopal Church uh, in uh, community with Redeemer Lutheran. So Laundry Love is a place where people who have no access to laundry otherwise can go to wash their clothes affordably. There is at Ascension Merrill a monthly gathering called Joyful Noise for people in the community who have mental disabilities so that they can come and worship in ways that they can engage and participate in. Trinity Oshkosh's initiative to pay off millions of dollars of their neighbor's debt, medical debt, is another example. St. Peter's Sheboygan Falls is partnering with a neighboring community service uh, organization to cultivate community gardens and engage with them and, and the people they serve in various ways. And Love, Inc., an ecumenical ministry in Sheboygan County, which is supported by several of our congregations and currently uh, led by Deacon Paul Aparicio of Gray Sheboygan, who is the board chairman, or the, chair, the, the president of the board. That organization is moving towards a partnership with the Episcopal Migration Ministries to support immigrants and refugees in Sheboygan County. And though it is not exactly new, our summer camp, program is now a joint venture with the Diocese of Eau Claire 
and Milwaukee. And they have drawn this past summer, drew campers and staff from across Wisconsin. It has been rechristened re Episco Wisco. And under Aaron Wolf's leadership, it remains a star in our crown. This is but a sample of the goodness that is going on across the diocese. There are reasons for hope. Plenty of challenges, and some places are facing more challenges than others, but there are reasons for hope, reasons to trust that God is not done with us yet. God is not done with the church. We are living in radically changing and discombobulating times for many of us. For many, it feels something like exile, as we long for a past we can no longer access. Many of us here, good news, increasingly fewer or less percentage of us, but many of us here grew up in a different century, came of age in a different century, before the internet, before 9-11, before the invasion of Iraq, before the Great Recession, before COVID-19, before January 6th. We also came of age in a time when many who were marginalized and forced, when, when many were marginalized and forced to live in the shadows. The world we live in now can feel strange and foreign. And many of us came of age at a time when the church had a better reputation than it does right now in many places. And more people were inclined to join and participate in church. It was a different time and a different church. Not, let's be clear, that the church of the second half of the 20th century necessarily reflected the faith of the ages and was always as faithful as it might have been. But looking back, it does feel like a more fulsome time for the church. In any event, there's no going back. Like the people Isaiah spoke to, or the Lord spoke through through Isaiah, there is only going forward and trusting that the God who has been faithful in the past will remain faithful as we journey into an unfamiliar future. God is not done with the church. In the gospel we just heard as Jesus appears to his disciples after the resurrection, we heard that Jesus came and stood among them and said, uh, he, after he said this, he showed them, I'm sorry, I'm skipping a bit here. He showed, us, showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Friends, Jesus sends the church as the Father sent him. The church has been sent to be in some sense, audacious as it sounds, the church has been sent to be in some sense the presence of Jesus in the world. That's you. That's me. The church is the Jesus movement Jesus started. And he will not abandon it. We need to reclaim a humble confidence that we have been sent to continue Jesus' ministry of reconciliation. The church was once described as an ever-widening sphere of an ever-deepening reconciliation. An ever-widening ever sphere of an ever-deepening reconciliation. That means we are to be about our own deepening reconciliation, drawing closer to God through prayer and worship and allowing God's Spirit to transform our hearts so that we can indeed be a reconciling presence, practicing an ever-deepening reconciliation among ourselves in our congregations, and then being the reconciling presence of Christ in the rest of the world. 
We need to reclaim a humble confidence that the church is where Jesus is most fully known and the forgiving, healing, transforming power of his spirit is most fully experienced. We need to reclaim a humble confidence that we do indeed have good news to share. Good news worth inviting others to give their life to and inviting them to join the church with us, to experience Jesus with us, and to be Jesus with us. I'm encouraged, was encouraged by the evangelism workshop that Father Chris Corbin led this summer at Trinity Oshkosh. We need to do more of that kind of thing, learning new ways to be about the mission we have been given to be sent as the Father sent Jesus. The reason I am convinced that we need to consider reunion with the other two dioceses of Wisconsin is it will enable us to be about that better. Reunion provides us with the opportunity to take a fresh look at how we are organized to become one diocese not to create a bigger version of what we've been, but to reconfigure and reorganize ourselves in service of mission. It will allow us to use our combined resources, human and financial, to share the joy of the gospel, create community, and engage in ministry. We have envisioned an, an Episcopal Diocese of Wisconsin that will confidently bear witness to the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ while also listening with humility to our neighbors of other faiths and, have none, uh, and of none. Together, we can be a diocese that will be better able to help congregations form committed followers of Jesus, equipping them with the spiritual resources to engage the challenges of our life and our time enabling us to better be a church for the 21st century, not the 20th century. We can be a diocese with congregations engaged in our communities and participating in ministries of reconciliation, restoration, and repair. Together, we can realize this vision, participating more fully in God's mission in Wisconsin, fostering the vitality of our congregations, both large and small, and finding innovative ways to adapt our ministry to the changing needs of the communities in which we find ourselves. Together, we can cultivate communities of worship, practice, and discipleship, both old and new, and seek fresh ways to follow Jesus from the heart of our Anglican tradition. Reunion will give us new ways and new energy for reaching people seeking hope and the promise of wholeness for this badly broken and hurting world. We can be a church in which all are welcome, all are encouraged, all are challenged, and all are transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, God is not done with us. God is not done with the church. We have been given good news. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, but the world is changing, and the church needs to adapt to find new ways to engage that changing world with good news. We need to adapt. We need to change. Change is sometimes cause for anxiety and maybe even fear. But hear the word of God. Hear the word of Jesus. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Peace be with you.